In this video, we'll look at 16b, so constant rate of change. Constant rate of change is essentially the gradient of a linear graph. So keep this in mind as we go, and hopefully it'll make more sense now. Gradient and rate of change. We know that gradient indicates steepness. So the greater the gradient, the steeper a linear function looks like. So for example, this blue line has a greater gradient compared to this orange line because it is steeper. And linear functions have a gradient. So every linear function has a gradient and the rate of change is essentially the gradient of this linear function. So to find the rate of change is essentially finding the gradient. So here's an example. A car traveled a distance of 150 kilometers in two hours. Assuming the car travels at a constant speed, draw a distance versus time graph and calculate the speed. So we know this graph starts at zero, zero, because when time is zero, we traveled zero kilometers. So this is our starting point. So the point O, the origin is essentially our starting point. We also know our end point. The car traveled for 150 kilometers in two hours. So that means after two hours have gone by, the car covered a distance of 150 kilometers. So at time t is equal to 120 minutes or two hours, the distance is equal to 150 kilometers. So we found our two ordered pairs on this graph. The first point is our starting point, zero, zero, the origin, and the end point is when the time is equal to 120 minutes, uh, the distance, the corresponding distance is 150 kilometers. You can also find another point, for example, point B. So point B is exactly halfway of the journey. So when the distance, so when the time is one hour, 60 minutes, the corresponding distance traveled is 75 kilometers. So the coordinates for point B will be 60 minutes and 75 kilometers. So point B is the halfway point. Now that we understand the graph, let's have a look at the question. So assuming the car travels at a constant speed, constant speed implies we are dealing with a linear graph and therefore the gradient is consistent. Why do linear graphs have constant speed? So this is because at any given point on this linear graph, the gradient is the same. That's why we can say that the car is traveling at a constant speed because the gradient is equal to rise over run. Rise over run, it is equal to distance over time and we know distance over time is equal to speed. So the gradient of this linear graph is also the speed of this car. Okay, we want to calculate the speed and we know this is a linear graph. So at any given point on this graph, the gradient will be the same. So maybe let's take two points and calculate the gradient. Using our starting point and end point, we can easily calculate the gradient. So if we do rise over run, then our x1 and x, um, x1 and will be 0 and x2 will be 120. y1 will be 0 and y2 will be 150. So rise over run, the gradient is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, if you're subbing the values 150 minus 0 over 120 minus 0, you can simplify this fraction to 5 over 4 kilometers per minute. Be very careful with the unit. We're measuring distance in kilometers and measuring time in minutes. So uh, the speed unit will be kilometers per minute. However, we tend to represent speed in kilometers per hour. So if you want to convert 5 over 4 kilometers per minute into hours, you just need to multiply this fraction by 60 because uh, there are 60 minutes in one hour. So the speed is equal to 5 over 4 times 60, which is equal to 75 kilometers per hour. All right. So finally, we can conclude that the speed of the car is 75 kilometers per hour. And this applies to any point on this graph. So for example, if you take point O and point B, and if you do the rise over run to find the gradient, the gradient will still be the same. So this is the standard solution in the textbook, and it's basically talking about the same thing. So if we denote the distance function by D, the graph of Y um, is equal to D of T. So we defined this function to be D of T. 
d for distance, t for time. And the rule of this function can be written as d of t um, is equal to 5 over 4 times t. So 5 over 4 here is our, um, is our gradient. So you see, normally you would write y is equal to 5 over 4 times x. But in this case, since we're measuring time versus distance, that's why the two variables become something different. So instead of x, the horizontal axis becomes t, t for time. And instead of um, y, well, in this case, we're still using y, but we just define this as d of t. But just remember that you can define a function in many ways. So this next line is basically saying that at any given point on this graph, on this linear graph, the gradient will always be the same. So if it's x, y over y, o, it's talking about rise over run, which denotes uh, the gradient. And this is equal to b, a over b, o. Again, rise over run, the gradient. And then using the fact that we know the gradient is 5 over 4 uh, kilometers per minute, we can convert this into kilometers per hour. And that's just what we did just now. So last example in this video, example five, three cars are driven over a two kilometer straight track. They, all, um, they are all to go from point A to point B. Each car travels with constant speed. It is not a race. Uh, so this is not a race because they're all traveling at different speed. The speed of car Y is twice that of car X. The speed of car Z is half that of car X. So if we translate these two dot points into mathematical sentences, then the first dot point says the speed of car Y is twice that of car X. The second dot point says the speed of car Z is half that of car X. This implies that the speed of car X is two times faster than car Z. You also notice that I've converted three kilometers and one kilometer per minute into meters. The reason why I did this is because it's easier to plot the graph if you have greater numbers in this case. Okay, it's easier when you're choosing the scales for your two axes. So that's why I converted two kilometers into 2000 meters and one kilometer per minute into 1000 meter per minute. So just keep that in mind and let's see what we can do here. In order to illustrate this situation, we need to truly understand what the question is talking about here. So the, all three cars need to travel the same distance, 2000 meters, and they're traveling at different speed. This last sentence uh, gave us really important information. We know the speed of car X. We also know the distance it needs to cover. So we can calculate the time taken. Before we calculate time, we need to make sure we're calculating with the same unit. So 2000 meters, um, that's in meters, and 1000 meters per minute, it's also in meters. So that's fine, we can calculate the time taken. So t time is equal to distance over speed. So t is equal to d over s, and the distance here is 2,000 meters. The speed is 1,000 meters per minute. This is equal to 2 minutes, which is 120 seconds. So after 120 seconds have gone by, so let's draw this. Oops, that's not a straight line. Let's try again. Okay, so after 120 seconds have gone by, Car X basically finished the journey, all right? It covered 2,000 meters, the total distance it needs to cover in um, two minutes, which is 120 seconds. So we can say that 120, when time is um, 120 seconds, Car X finishes the journey. We also know that according to the first dot point, the speed of car Y is twice that of car X. And remember, we had this relationship between the speed of Y and the speed of X. So if the speed of Y is equal to two times the speed of X, then that means car Y will take less time to complete the journey. Now, since all three cars need to travel the same distance, we have 2000 meters on the Y axis, on the vertical axis, and we can draw a straight line across to imply that they need to travel the same distance. The only thing that varies is the speed. And this is reflected directly on the graph, and we can see it from the times, because it's going to take them different time to complete uh, 2000 meters. 
Okay, so this is the end point for car, um, car X. Now, according to the first dot point, the speed of car Y is twice that of car X. So if Y is two times faster than X, then it's going to take less time for car Y to complete the journey. If it took 120 seconds for car X to finish the journey, then it will take exactly half of the time for car Y to finish the journey. So 120 times half um, is equal to 60. So it's going to take car Y 60 seconds to cover the same distance. So the end point for car Y on this linear graph is 60 and 2000. So in other words, it's going to take uh, two minutes for car X to finish 2000 meters, whereas it's going to take one minute for car Y to finish the same journey. According to the second dot point, the speed of car Z is half that of car X. This means car Z is traveling at a slower speed, and um, which is exactly half of the speed of car X. Therefore, if it took 120 seconds for car X to finish the journey, then it's going to take car Z uh, two times the amount of time car X used to finish the same journey. So 120 times two is 240. So it's going to take car Z 240 seconds to travel the same distance. This also implies that the end point for car Z on this yellow line will be at 240 seconds and 2000 meters. Now, how do we find the gradient? All three graphs pass through the same point, zero, zero. And this makes sense because at time zero, the distance is zero because we're simply not traveling. Okay, we haven't started. So this is our starting point. So once we have these three points and we also know the fact that they both pass through point zero, zero, we can use rise over run to find the gradient for each of the three functions. In summary, an object whose motion can be described by a linear distance time graph is traveling at a constant speed. Remember, we just talked about this. The reason why a linear distance time graph has a constant speed is because for a linear graph, okay, like this, the gradient is the same at any given point on this line, all right? And, um, the constant speed is equal to the gradient of the line graph because we're measuring time versus distance and we know that speed is equal to distance over time which happens to be how you normally find the gradient second dot point straight line graph um, if we have a straight line graph we can find its gradient using rise over run and this will be the constant rate of change Okay, so one more time, maybe let's just um, do a quick revision. So gradient M, gradient is equal to rise over run, which is equal to Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. So if you have the two ordered pairs, the two coordinates on your linear graph, um, X1, Y1 and X2, Y2, using this formula, you can easily find what the gradient is. And in real life, a linear graph is commonly used. So for example, in petrol consumption of a car or exchange rates for uh, currencies. So I hope you find this video helpful and hope to see you in the next video. Bye.